Hello friends, this is the fourth reflection on the Lord's Prayer from Matthew 6 and today we shall be focusing on verse 11. But before I give my thought for the day, here is a reading once more. Beginning at verse 7. Now, when you pray, do not heap up empty phrases as the Gentiles do, for they think that they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. Pray then in this way. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today the bread we need now. Forgive us the things we owe. As we also have forgiven those who owe us. And do not bring us to the time of trial, but rescue us from the evil one. I've always thought that Matthew 6.11 should have a blank in the place where it says bread. And this is so that people from other cultures can insert their staple food in there. I know bread sounds normal, but as a young boy, I misunderstood what Jesus meant by daily bread. I mean, for starters, I never ate bread on a daily basis because in my context as a child, bread was a luxury. So give us today the nshima we need in this moment would be my translation, if I'm honest. Now, I know what you're thinking. What is nshima? Well, I mean, we've got Google for that. So please Google the word nshima. And no, it's not like semolina. Okay? Right. Now, I might be getting carried away here, but what I want to point out or the point that I want to make is that Jesus teaches his disciples to ask God for daily provisions. Give us today the bread we need now. I do not know about you, but this request is a bit surprising, especially that Jesus already said that God knows what you need even before you ask him. And one would think that food is the one thing you'd expect God knows we need for sure. I mean, so why ask? Two things. But first, I want to make a theological point. You you have noticed that I have translated verse 11 differently to what you might be used to. And that is because the Greek word semeron, which is commonly translated as today, has got an agency to it which I would like to convey. So Semeron has got the sense of this moment or now. And this sense of the word speaks to a context where people live under the weight of poverty and it is not assumed that ordinary life will automatically include the provision of food. And so, give us the bread we need now is actually appropriate. Right, here are the two things then. The first and obvious one is that to ask God for food affirms and acknowledges our dependence on God for provision and sustenance each moment. For those of us who do not suffer from hunger for one reason or the other, it is easy to overlook the primary importance of seeking God for our daily meals. Now, friends, I just want to remind us that it is God who gives us the food that we have in our homes. And please never forget that. The second point is that to ask God for food is actually a condemnation of economic systems that allow people to go without food. There's a lot to be said about economic systems that in times of plenty, many still go hungry. When one party lives in abject poverty while the other has enough food to throw away, it is only right to call on help and someone outside of this system to give what is needed to sustain those who need the food. And that someone is God. Um, did I say two things? Right. Sorry. There's actually one more thing. I also think that give us today the bread we need now 
is also a call to God's people not only pray for daily bread for ourselves, but also for those who need it and with whom we should share it. To pray this way is a call to the ending of suffering among God's people. There's a reason Jesus did not say, pray, give me today the bread I need now, but give us, that is, not just me. So if you pray and God gives you enough for two, my friends, share. 